How you doing Megalithomaniacs? Welcome to Zibble Chow Tun. Now I think it's important about this site, it's aligned to the equinox. They have groups come here at like 5.30 in the morning to witness the equinox sunrise along the Eastern Avenue, the Sac Bay, that rises through and you can see it through the Temple of the Dolls. Now we're going to go up there shortly, but for now we're just walking up onto the Sac Bay itself from the museum and wow we're going to see from a distance what these temples look like wow here we are check this out if you look behind me here that down there is the temple of the seven dolls the main probably the most important part of this site i'm now heading east along the plaza towards the temple of the seven dolls we can see here a platform with stele and there's several of these as we head down to the main temple down here. There's a few different temples up here, it's not just one. It's about half a mile or so. We're walking along this raised sack bay, this sacred white road. Many of these stretch for miles, like hundreds of miles in some cases in the Yucatan. And so there's a lot more to these sack bays and meets here. They're not just roads for transport, they're sacred pathways, astronomical, energetic, other such things. So this is Sac Bay 1. There was, there was actually more than one here. Most of it's in the jungle now. It's 20 meters wide, so that's like 60 feet, over 400 meters long, almost half a kilometer. And it heads kind of through, you know, east-west. So it's got this alignment, we know, with the equinox, the sunset and the sunrise. It connects with a huge platform which upholds the building, the Seven Dolls, because that is like a chincana, like, sacred shaped platform that the whole thing was built up on this huge platform which in the shape of the chincana which is something we find in ancient um peru and they know uh that it's a raised area and it's a sacred road so let's get down there and take a look so we've just walked that 300 meters of the sac bay and you can see here this is where the platform begins way before you reach the temple of the seven dolls so here you have a great view of the edge of the sacred white road or sack bay that stretches all the way from the east to the west here for over 400 meters at Zibul Chautan. So this is like the habitation area of Zibul Chautan, just to the side of the sack bay towards the eastern end uh, in the Temple of the Seven Dolls. And there's three of these elliptical rooms here, which are interesting. They say they're just classic Mayan living areas, but these are ellipses. So ellipses have a geometry to them. Ellipses also have acoustic properties. I don't know if these were living quarters. These could have been ancient like stone circle structures that were part of the ceremonial pathway as you come up to the site. So I'm not buying it that these were just elliptical houses. There's something else about these which kind of intrigued me. And also they've got like megalithic blocks making up their construction. Does that just look like somewhere someone would live? Surely they would build structures with roofs and other such things. This is very odd. I think there's something else. They say they were just used for grinding things, living in working in and so forth but we have like megalithic blocks like this is just like a, sto a small stone circle you'd find in like northern ireland or <laughs> other parts of britain with a kind of grinding stone there and then the doorway here so this is the doorway to one of these three elliptical houses but this looks interesting to me because this is perfectly west so you're looking east that way, west that way, and it's perfectly aligned to the Sac Bay, to the sacred avenue that goes, you know, across the whole site here. So I think there's something else going on here. This, this, this is, this looks, feels more ancient. It's like we've got megalithic blocks. It's like a small elliptical stone circle. And we know they have acoustics, this particular shape. And so I think there's more to this than meets the eye. And I'm gonna check the orientation of the other ones as well, but let's have a quick look inside. So this is potentially another one of the elliptical buildings. So here we have the first one, first elliptical building you enter as you come into the site, into the, the sort of habitation zone. Now this is 6.2 meters by 3.24 meters. So I'll check if that's anything. It almost looks like an egg shaped rather than uh, a classic kind of oval. 
Now they think these were quite late, but they have these megalithic foundations with, and it would have had a roof over the top of it. If you look here, you can see where they would have been in the site. You know, you can see the different shapes. This is the kind of egg shape more than it is oval. And again, we find these egg shapes in the geometries in the stone circles in Britain, where we find, um, uh, you know, the stone circles as proposed and surveyed by Alexander Tom back, you know, in the 1940s, 50s and 60s. Now there's something intriguing about this because these are recorded as being like megalithic, have megalithic foundations and they're very specific geometries and so to me these aren't just houses where the Mayans lived when they put fake roofs on it and stuff there's something else going on here we'll have a look at the other two and we'll look at the map of them to see if there's any significance here because this reminds me of the layout design and geometry of some of the stone circles in ancient Britain <laughs> Just behind me is structure 12. This is one of 20 megalithic stelae here. This is just before you reach the Temple of the Seven Dolls, and it's another example of megaliths here at Zibel Chow Tan. There's something about these stelas on these platforms, and this one particularly, this to me, it's like the most important one at the site. It's marking the beginning of the sacred precinct where the Temple of the Seven Dolls is the astronomical temple and it's marking a point. I think this is the geodetic marker here at the site, which was here long before the rest of the site was built. And now we know that there's carvings of the plumed serpent here. There's references to Quetzalcoatl and Cuckoo Clan and potentially what looks like Olmec carvings. It wouldn't surprise me if this was placed here actually around 2000 BC when the earliest dating was supposed to have been um, found at. So this is, this is like, to me, this is something special, something interesting that needs more research. But the fact is you've got this looking in between the Western and Eastern portions of the site. And yeah, just something to make note of and to find out more about, because I bet you there's more under this sack bay and under some of these structures that go back to an even earlier date. So these stelae we do find all over the site do really, really interest me because they do appear to be just megaliths like we find in Britain, like we find in other parts of the world. Um, and the fact that we're finding megalithic construction at Ismail, Aki and other places is fascinating considering they were also linked by a sack bay between the two sites. So we have the sack bay here linking the main plaza with the Temple of the Seven Dolls. And we must remember at the Temple of the Seven Dolls itself, the reason it's called that they found these dolls there, I think there's one in the museum we looked at. And, but they've actually stripped away the later structure. So again, we have this, what you, what you see today up at the end of the, the sack bay is actually the earlier structure because the top structure was so badly ruined so they stripped that away when they were kind of fixing up the site and so that's interesting in itself so we're seeing older parts of the site on display here at the site um, and this could have been like the origin point of the astronomy here we've seen calendrical motifs glyphs carved on many of the stelae we've seen some very bizarre statues in the outside part of the museum which really look like Olmec statues to me they certainly don't look Mayan, and very different, um, but they've got this Olmec look, almost like you find up, not only up on the Gulf Coast, but also down in southern Guatemala. Um, and so did their influence even stretch up here to the Yucatan and from a very early date? You can see that's probably like nine feet tall. And could this actually be an ancient megalith here at Zibel Chautan? There's a suggestion that these may have been here originally, like megalithic markers, potentially astronomical markers, and then they were reincorporated into the site because of the dating here goes back to 2000 BC. Now, that's a question mark about this. This is pure speculation, but the more you look into this and the deeper levels you go at, like we saw at one of the temples up in the main plaza, you see that there's megalithic aspects and we find that all over the Mayan world. So now we're gonna head up into the main part of the site, the Temple of the Seven Dolls, which is aligned with the equinox.
So just behind me here, there's three platforms and then there's the Temple of the Seven Dolls. And this whole area behind me here is like a chinkana from above. If you look at it downwards, you can see the shaping. There's some unusual features. It was built over in 800 AD and they found these strange dolls here, which I'll tell you about when we get there. So we're walking up to the series of platforms you reach before you get to the Temple of the Seven Dolls. Already I've seen some quite large blocks in the construction. This, these are just basically called the adjoining rooms. Uh, there are three rooms, with one with an open hall. There's grey obsidian, green stones and other such things. And it's thought that maybe ornaments were actually manufactured in this area. So this is what it would have looked like. And it's really interesting because it appears they experimented here with space and dimensions. And you could see, look at that. You can see that from above. You see that with the drone as well, that they may have been experimenting with acoustics, consciousness studies, even psychedelics here, because some are sealed, some are open. And you can see those all here. See different, way, different ways they're constructed and the same thing here as well, actually on the main Temple of the Seven Dolls. And we see some examples of megalithic blocks just in the foundations of these so-called adjoining rooms. So this is the Temple of the Seven Dolls. And this gives its name really to an offering that was made here of these coarsely made, strange looking, almost really spooky looking dolls, almost like gingerbread men or something. And this is a one story quadrangular building. Uh, it has uh, steps going up either side, four access windows. East and west are the main ones for the equinox. Um, and this would have been, this could have actually been an astronomical observatory. This could have been the original one at the site. But we must remember that the outer casing was stripped off and it was, this was found and it had these eight stuccoed masks upon a base of carved stone at the site. Two intertwined serpents and glyphs, beads, feathers, a sea animal, all in modeled stucco. And towards 800 AD, the whole place was filled up with stones and covered by another larger building whose remains partly still cover it. You can actually see that on the outer part of the steps and the lower levels. And so this is a pretty remarkable site, part of the site here at Zibel Chao Tan. So this part, this outer part here is obviously the outer temple that was reconstructed in 800 AD. At the top there, you can see just what's left. If I zoom in a bit, sorry about the shaky camera. My other batteries ran out on my other camera. You can see this is probably where the stuccoed masks were attached to the stone at the very top of the temple. Now, fortunately, the Temple of the Seven Dolls is closed to the public. Can't actually go in it at the moment, but I'll show you some photos that Stuart Mason took of the Equinox when he was here several years ago but you can see the stunning beauty of it. And now it's oriented to the four directions. The base is like a chinkana cross. It's got protruding megalithic blocks. And this is the older temple. The other temple was on top of this. And there was stucco all around this, sort of pook style perhaps, that may have been added later. But this is remarkable. And then the, win the main window there on the left side there, that's uh, facing kind of west. So the sun would come up behind it on the equinox and shine straight through it down the sack bay towards the eastern edge of the main plaza. So here we are looking at it from uh, one edge. And you can see this is the original construction, part of the original construction at the base there. If we just zoom in a bit on that. You can see it's kind of very cool design. Now this could go back to an extremely early era. And then this as well we know is also 
part of the original construction, which was reconstructed in around 800 AD. And that over there on the other side of the steps, that is the part that was reconstructed at 800 AD. So you have to question this whole site, how much of it has been reconstructed. Now, much of it looks like the part on the steps on the right there at this site. So potentially this earlier site, which may be related to the Olmecs, it could be related, especially to Aki and Izamal with the megalithic construction. Um, yeah, how old really is this? This is just a very, very impressive temple, this temple of the seven dolls. So it's amazing to have had the chance to visit the whole of Zibul Chautan. The whole site is just much more impressive than I remember. I actually came here, last time I was here was when I first came here in 2003. So a long time ago, it's almost what, 18 years ago. And it's changed quite a lot. There's a huge visitor center. There was nothing like that then. But there's something about this site that gets me. And if you're in Mexico, in the Yucatan, it's a must see. The museum has got some amazing pieces in it. And there's enough evidence here, as we've seen, to suggest it's a megalithic site before it became the site we see today, going back to a much earlier date than most people recognize. So thanks for watching Megalithomaniacs. I appreciate it. Please subscribe, click the bell icon, become a patron if you can, and we'll see you next time.